Hello, this is Mark Summers from Summers Technical Services. We're going to do a little simple bolt model as a uh, SolidWorks tutorial today. And this is the bolt we're going to be modeling. It's MasterCar 1-inch X-Bolt. So we're going to start off by looking at a model that I generated earlier. That has all the details of the part model. It's got all the fillets. It's actually got the helical thread, the impression on the head, lots and lots of features. Well, we don't need a model like this if we're just going to use it in assembly to assemble some plates together. If you need to manufacture the bolt, maybe you need something like this or you're making some kind of a glossy technical publication, but we don't need all that detail, so we're just going to do a simple model to use in our design. So we'll start with a new part from our template. It's an inch dimension, so we'll use our inch template. And we're going to start off by sketching that hex shape and learn a little bit about geometric constraints and dimensional constraints. So here we go. I'll uh, get my front plane selected. That's where I want to sketch on. And go to sketch and hit the sketch button. So I'm going to start drawing my hex bolt here and not paying too close attention, but as I go across here, clicking my flats on my hex bolt, I'm going to pay attention to make sure I get these horizontal constraints automatically added. So as I get close to horizontal, you can see I get an indication that that's going to be an automatically added horizontal constraint. And there it is right there in the middle at the bottom. So coming around here, I'll just sketch away making sure that this one's horizontal as well and maybe not being too careful on these other ones so i'll escape out of the line command and my x doesn't look so great so we need to start doing some geometric constraints to make it look like a regular hexagon so one of the things uh features of a regular hexagon is that it's got equal sides so i'm going to right click and add a geometric constraint which i do by saying add relations when the dialog box pops up, I'll start selecting these lines and they'll enter themselves into the selected entity box. So one, two, three, four, five, six lines. And I'm going to select down here that I want them to all be equal. Prove that. Now I'm still not very, doesn't look very good still, but it's getting better. So now I'll say, I'll put in another constraint and start trying to make this thing geometrically look like a hexagon. I'll straighten up a little bit. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line these three, these two points here in this axis, this origin of the part, I'm going to line those up horizontally. So again, I'm going to right click, add relationships. And when the dialog pops up, box pops up, I'm going to add that vertice, that vertice, and the part origin and have those line up horizontally. Prove that. Now we'll do something similar vertically, except I don't have any points here on these lines here, but I can have a midpoint by selecting a point command and hover over that line. And as I get close to the middle, you can see the indicator changes to a midpoint. So when I click there, I get a midpoint. And then when I click down here somewhere, it's going to show me a midpoint. Click there prove that. So now I've got two points that are midpoints that I can line up vertically again with this origin point over here. So I'm going to right click, add relations again. When the dialog box pops up, I'm going to go midpoint or point, it happens to be a midpoint, and that point and the origin and have those all line up vertically. Still not quite there yet, but it's starting to be haved just like a hexagon, except I've got a problem with these sides. So I could put an angle and a dimension and be done, but I want to minimize the number of angle or number of dimensional constraints I add. I want to minimize those and maximize my geometric constraints. So what I want to do is do a little construction geometry. I'll place a circle at the origin and 
convert that to construction geometry. So if I select it, should have done this as I was creating it, but I'm just going to turn on that construction option. So now it's not part of the sketches, it's part of my construction geometry. Now I'm going to go back to relationships, add relationship, relationships, and I want to tell this vertice here to be coincident with that circle. And do a similar thing over here. I'll right click clear selections now that I made that one. Now I'll select that point, that vertice in that circle, make those coincident. And that was the last thing I needed to make this thing behave like a true regular hexagon. So now I believe all I need is one more dimension. So I'll add that with my smart dimensions. It'll guess, it'll determine whether or not I need a vertical or horizontal or angular dimension just based on the features I grab. So I believe from the data sheet that was a one and a half inch across the flats. You'll notice the sketch entities all turn black. That means it's fully constrained. So I'll exit the sketch. With the sketch selected, I'll go to features and I'll do an extrude, extrusion. And it looked like the uh, hex head height was 69, excuse me, 39 64. So I'll just type that in and SOLIDWORKS will calculate that for me and approve that sketch. Now I don't like these uh, shadows on the bottom. That's, I don't like the way that looks. So I want to quickly go to appearances and scenes, right click and turn off floor reflection, floor shadow. There, that's a little bit more appealing to my eye. So now I want to go back to sketch tab. I want to sketch on this face right here. And I'm going to draw me a circle at the origin. Through that, add me a smart dimension. And it's going to be a one inch diameter for the unthreaded portion of the bolt. It's, it's uh, fully constrained as well. I'm going to edit this, exit the sketch with the sketch selected. Go to features, extrude. And now I've got to determine what depth I want to extrude this because it's got two possible, or it's got a range of lengths. It can go from two and a quarter to two and seven eighths in length. So I've got to figure the worst case scenario for my assembly model. So assuming I have a one inch plate here, I can get my calculator and do some high level math here and calculate that if the bolt is three and a half inches, I subtract one inch for that plate. That means I need at least two and a half inches worth of threads. I need more than two and a half inches of threads. Otherwise, the nut will potentially bottom out on the thread here. So that tells me that I want to design this or I want to build this CAD model assuming a minimum amount of threads. So that'll be the worst case scenario. If it's a little bit threaded longer to two and seven eighths, That'll only help, but I want to show that transition point at the worst possible place for my assembly design. So I want to make that thread length two and a quarter inches long, which means this portion of the thread will be, or excuse me, this portion, unthreaded portion, will be three and a half minus two and a quarter, which is going to be one and a quarter. So this length is one and a quarter, and I'll approve that. And then I want to sketch on this face to sketch and extrude the threaded portion. So I'll go back to Sketch tab, select that face, say Sketch, and draw me a circle again at that origin. And we're going to make it the same diameter as the other portion. So I'll go to Smart Dimension, select that circle, and make it one inch as well. So now I can edit the sketch with it selected. I'll go to Features, Extrude, and it's going to be three and a half inches. That's the overall length minus the one and a quarter that I made for the threaded portion. And that gives me my two and a quarter inch threaded portion, which is my worst case scenario based on my data sheet. 
So then once I prove that, I'm done with my bolt. But now I'm noticing that since I've got two extrusions on top of one another, the same diameter, I can't see that edge anymore. So in my assembly model, that would not be good because I couldn't tell by looking at it where that break was. So again, this is not a manufacturing model, so I can uh, possibly play a little trick here. I'll just edit the sketch by right-clicking Edit Sketch, and I'll just change this one-inch diameter to a maybe a .995. So if I do that, now I'll get a very tiny edge on my model. Let's hit Updates here. Got to go to sketch, exit sketch. So now there's a tiny edge there, but since we're not manufacturing for this model, that's going to be fine. We're leaving off all these other features. But now I get that nice edge so I can see it in my assembly model. So very quickly, I was able to build a simple bolt with features that allow me to use an assembly model and not have to go to the effort to build that detailed model as shown in that first model I showed you. So hopefully that was informational as a kind of a first step SolidWorks tutorial. And you can look for more SolidWorks Pro E and Inventor tutorials on my website, www.marksummers.net, and on my YouTube channel.